Eric Dieters, the Bulldog, on Real Talk 1160. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jerry, what the case of the people versus the government is all about is simple. The people want and deserve oracles. The government insists on jack wagons. Therefore, you must decide after the deliberations, after this show, between, as Lincoln asked, a government of the oracles, by the oracles, and for the oracles, or something like that, or a government of jack wagons, by jack wagons, and for jack wagons. And as you consider your decision, as you deliberate after the show, I want you to ensure that you remember that superbity or stupidity is at stake. May you decide what is best for America, or may God, which, if you didn't know, is actually dog spelled backwards. I'm not kidding about that. Have mercy on your soul. So that's my opening statement to you today. What do you think, TC? It's a great tie. Thank you. Great tie. That's what he thought about my statement. Great tie. <laughs> How do you like that? How do you like that? A great tie. Jacob, good morning to you. I just want everybody to know that I'm revved up, jacked up, agile, mobile, hostile as always, ready to go. Uh, so much going on, and you know, there's sometimes you all know what I'm just, you know what I'm talking about. Don't you love it? Like when you plan a party, and you plan that party, and it, it could be a good party. You planned it well, and then there's other times you don't plan a party, and it is the best party you have ever had. It's like a bunch of guys, teenagers hanging out. And then just a party breaks out, and it becomes memorable. It's just like everything just falls into place. Delivering radio is a lot like that. See, I am prepared every single day. But I will tell you that when I sit down every morning with my Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the USA Today, the Inquirer, and all these websites, the Courier Journal, the Lexington Herald, and Columbia Dispatch, and I, and I go, there's sometimes I'm putting together my blog and newsletter, and it's like, there's just not much material. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today, today, there is so much material. We are not in need of any supplements to the show. <laughs> Humor today. This is good stuff. This is borrowed. I want to thank the Bulldog Nation member who contributed this. Baraki Road Ice Cream. Have you heard about this? Uh, I think Baskin Robbins, Graders. Uh, everybody is putting it out there now. UDF, it's called Baraki Road. Do you know what that is, Jacob? Baraki Road is a blend of half vanilla, half chocolate, surrounded by nuts and flakes. The vanilla portion of the mix is not openly advertised and usually denied as an ingredient. The nuts and flakes are plentiful. The cost is $92.84 a scoop. So out of a $100 bill, you're promised some change. When purchased, it will be presented to you in a large, beautiful cone. But after you pay for it, the ice cream is taken away and given to the person in line behind you at no charge. You are left with an almost empty wallet, starting an empty, staring at an empty cone and wondering what the hell just happened. Then you realize what redistribution of wealth is all about. That is the Baraki Road ice cream cone. In an ice cream theater, I mean an ice cream shop near you. Ice cream theater. <laughs> Here's the Shakespeare for the day, TC. Men's vows are women's traitors. Ooh, 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 wow. Ooh, 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 ooh. Dog saying today, if you pick up a starving dog and make him prosperous, he will not bite you. This is a principal difference between a dog and a man. How You know what? That is true. You know, we're going to start out hot. We're going to start out hot. <laughs> we're going to jump right in. We're going to bestow oracles and jack wagons. Right off the bat. Now, the first oracle, I tell you right now, this guy deserves oracle status. I've never met him before. His name is Arnold Beasel. Beasel's a big name in Campbell County. 79-year-old Campbell County beekeeper who spent overnight the other night in below freezing temperatures in a field. And he's still alive. 
That, ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, deserves Oracle status as we give it out. Don't you agree? I mean, that guy is a tough hombre, as oh, yeah. we say. No doubt. Uh, my my uh, stuff isn't up, so we'll just have to tell him that he begins Oracle status, unless you can bestow it. Yeah. The other Oracle, and the last Oracle for today, is Kristen Chenoweth. You say, Bull Talk. Why Kristen Chenoweth? Because I've decided, as the commander of Bulldog Nation, of all the women out there in pop culture, she is the one woman that every one of you men out there knows that she's a good girl and you wish she was not. You've been awarded you know what I'm says. talking about, TC? Oh, yeah. I mean, she's like little Christian girl, but she dresses. I mean, come on, Christian. Yeah, <laughs> thought you are Christian. Why, why are you dressing like that? Uh, Jack Wagons of the day, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, these might be, this is a trifecta superbity in Jack Wagons. Jack Wagon number one, Marston Hefner. You Jack Wagon? That is you, son. You know what he did? He beat the hell out of his playmate girlfriend. What? And then vandalized her computer. Oh, that's no good. Uh, by the way, if you want to have a child grow it up, grow up and be bullied, name him Marston. Sounds like Marshmallow. You don't think some kid said, Marshmallow Marston? Congressman Roscoe Bartlett. You jack wagon? You know what he did, TC? What did he do? He submitted a bill that's going to give those who have mustaches a $250 tax credit for mustache maintenance materials during the course of a year. Is that right? Is that not incredible? Well, the folks at Gillette are happy about that. Good God. And then the final Jack Wagon, the Jack Wagon trifecta today, is Francois Hollande. Okay, Francois. because of the name? Jack yeah, 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 the yeah name. he ought to be. Yeah, Jack Wagon! He is the front runner, TC, to, to replace Sarkozy, who's also running, for Prime Minister of France. He's proposing a 75% tax rate. On those that make $1.35 million. I tell you right now, if you yeah, make a million wagon. dollars, be grateful you don't live in France. Really? 75%. Let me see. So, therefore, your $1.35 million, you're going to have about 350000 Man, for all your hard work. For Let, all your hard work. Let's go back to uh, Captain Mustache here. Captain Mustache. Okay, now, this guy, all the other issues we have going on in Washington and around the country and around the world. Yes. This guy's laying awake at night thinking, hmm, you know, we need to level the playing field for guys with mustaches. It's incredible. Only in America. People wonder why our country is, like, messed up. You know, sometimes you have stuff like that, and you hear it somewhere, and you read it, and you think, this has to be a joke. You're right. That's That falls in that category. We're paying this guy for that. Uh, the quote of the day, TC, for the saddest epitaph, which can be carved in memory of a vanished liberty, is that... It was lost because its possessors failed to stretch forth a saving hand while there was yet time. Like Lindsay Lohan and her judgment. By the way, Lindsay's in the news, and she's part of pop culture, which will be coming up after the break. You're going to love pop culture today. In fact, I'm going to bait you. They, they tell me I need to bait you more. See, my show's so damn good, I just figure you're going to listen every minute regardless of bait. But I'm going to bait you. My first pop culture entry is a Hall of Fame pop culture entry, and it may be the best pop culture story that we have ever had. Now, I've been doing this show since June of last year. This could be the best pop culture story of all time. Whoa. Of all time. And I found it because I read the Courier-Journal. See? I take care of you. Today in history, uh, FDR signed a second neutrality act as he appealed to American businesses not to increase exports to belligerents. <laughs> you know what? The problem with America today is we do too much business with belligerents. <laughs> That's right. 1940, Gone with the Wind won eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture. I don't know about you, TC, but uh, I had a crush. I had a crush on old Scarlet. Did you? Oh, oh. 1960, the first Playboy Club opened in Chicago. 1968, President Johnson signed the National Advisory Commission on Civil Disorders. There's civil Disorders. Uh, famous birthdays today. The only one worth mentioning is Tony Robbins, who is 51. Tony Robbins is friends with Lori Taylor, who is a social network extraordinaire. 
proud to say no military deaths to report. Three-day forecast scattered in strong storms today. Tomorrow, sunny high of 59. Friday, thunder showers high of 68. Great feel-good song of the day, although it's about breaking up. <laughs> I do have some more birthdays for you, but I want to talk Go. to you about it after the break. After the break. You're going to like this when we do this. And coming up, folks, the best pop culture story of all time. Wow. On Real Talk 1160. Listen up this morning at 728. We have the O'Reilly Factor coming up for you here on Real Talk 1160. And now back to the Bulldog. This is Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Happy Leap Day year. February 29th, this day comes around every 10 years. You know why they do that, TC? They do that. Every four years. Four years, excuse me. They do that because because they have to keep the calendar going right. And if right. they didn't make up for it by throwing in that day every four years, uh, there'd be an issue. This is Caesar's uh, calendar, isn't it? Caesar's, that's correct. Yeah. It, it, Caesar's calendar. And for some reason, the Julian days, calendar, they call it. it. It does work out. Now, uh, there are a few celebrity birthdays. Uh, there's rapper Ja Rule, uh, born in 1976, which was also. He was on year. my list, and I just read over, I just skipped over him. I didn't think he was worthy of mention. Is that right? Do yeah. Go ahead. He's, he's all right. So that makes him what now? 36 years old? 36, that's correct. Or nine. It depends on how you look at it. He's only had nine birthdays. That's right. Uh, rapper, uh, who is this? Uh, Saul Williams. Nah, I, got I don't nothing even know on who that. the hell these guys are. Now, uh, soap opera actor Antonio Sabato or Sabato Jr. Now he you know this day, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury. Now you know why I do the names. I did Tony Robbins. You know who that is. Does anybody even know any of these names that TC is reading? That's Dennis Farina. Over three. Dennis Farina. Nobody knows who the hell he is. That's oh, four. Oh, dude, Law and Order. Okay, next. The silver haired. D- you don't know that. You come on now. All you, right. Who else? You know, Dinah Shore. There you go. Jimmy Dorsey. Burt Reynolds, lover. Dinah Shore and Burt. So there. They were lovers. But now these people only celebrate their birthday once every four years. Well, you know the new trend is, don't you? What's that? Uh, the economic. Here's how bad it. You know how bad it is. How bad is it? It is so bad that everybody's getting married today because that way they don't have to buy anniversary presents for each other except every four years, and it saves them several hundred dollars every year. smart. I like that. That's how bad it is. (laughs) History story. Are you ready for a good history story? Yeah, yeah. We love history on this show because, as you know, I am a – Wall Street Journal, Men's Health, Maxim Magazine, and History Book rolled into one. Uh, (laughs) Jerry Ford, that's the President Ford, his name was Jerry, created a national controversy with his pardon of Richard Nixon in August of 74. But that didn't stop him from signing another pardon a year later. This one was given to someone who had applied for it 110 years earlier. Bulldog Nation. Do you know who that was? 513-579-1160, but I'm not going to give you a chance to answer. After the Civil War had ended, any Confederate soldier could apply for pardon and have his citizenship restored. General Robert E. Lee decided to do just that. He sent his application to General Grant, who recommended to President Johnson that it be approved. For that to happen, Lee had to take a notarized oath of allegiance to the Union. Such a move was considered controversial in the South. Still not reconciled to its defeat. But Lee went ahead and did it. Wanting to set an example that others would follow to help heal the wounds of war. Just imagine that. Lincoln wanted to extend an olive branch. Grant let those Confederates have their horse and their rifle as they went home. You know what? It is important to be magnanimous in victory. You know what? And you can afford to be when you win. Lee's oath of allegiance was forwarded to the Secretary of State, but instead of passing on to the president, he gave it to a friend as a souvenir, perhaps purposely wanting to derail Lee's application. General Lee died in 1870 without receiving a pardon or having his citizenship restored. 100 years after his death, Lee's oath turned up in a national archives. Congress voted to pardon Lee and restore his citizenship. President Ford signed the bill into law, and oversight of 110 years old was corrected. That is awesome. Wow. Here's a, here's a, here's a trivia question for you. 
What was what did Robert E. Lee? He died in 1970. Did not live. I mean, 1870. Did not live long. What was the job that Robert E. Lee took after the Civil War? He drum roll. Dun, 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 I'm dun, going dun. to say that he he had something to do with uh, uh, at Fort Knox. Not a bad guess, but that's not true. What he did is he became the president of what later became and is presently Washington and Lee University in Virginia. Is that right? Which is named after the two famous generals and one president, George Washington wow. and Robert E. Lee. Washington Lee. I uh, There was a law clerk at Dieters, Benzer, and Lavelle when I was in law school. He went to law school, too. His name was Jay Stratton who had went to Washington Lee. It's kind of a preppy school, I think. He was kind of a preppy dude from Louisville. Handsome guy. He went out. I never get – I hung out with him for a few months, and uh, he had a beautiful girlfriend, like a blonde – she was like a Playboy playmate. And he looked like he could be on GQ, Jay Stratton. I didn't see him for years until I saw him down in Louisville uh, at the uh, a horse race. I wonder what would happen to Jay Stratton. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, before we get to pop culture, I have a show and tell. You know, I have been discussing with you uh, that I have an agent who is pitching me for national radio syndication, a lawyer reality television show, and other things. And I have worked diligently, and I have worked hard to put together an incredible packet of information. Now, not only did I put the content together, and then Chuck Colebrook, and I don't even know Nate's last name, but my... uh, commercial artist and he's a commercial artist and as well as a printer nate put together this packet of information which is incredible now i want to just point out something to tc and the program director rob if he's listening here in the back is a collage of about 10 minutes of video that jacob who is shooting this put together which is incredible it shows me in court it shows my mma fight it shows me being interviewed it gives you a good flavor of the Bulldog. Here is the interview with Trisha Mackey of Channel 19, which is a great little biopic. So what's going to happen is we send this out. We're going to have this. Now, the radio station is going to get a copy of all this, too. Now, right here is a packet which you can see is blank. Why is that blank? Because I am still waiting for my buddy TC and my buddy Rob to put together and finish their radio demo that's going to go right here. And look, see this, TC? We even have the sticker for it right here as we're waiting. Now, did you do your homework and get all that to Rob? Oh, you know what? I did my part, but let me, let me may I interject something ah, here? Ha, ha, ha. May I I've interject? called him out. I've called him out. Yes, interject. You know, a radio demo, I don't know if you realize this or not, it's kind of a personal thing. Jocks kind of like to do it themselves. I have no technical ability to do it <laughs> myself. None. But I did pick the spots from yesterday's show. But anyway, Rob, if you're listening, there's the empty packet that awaits your radio disc. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I have discussed too, I've spoken too long, and I have to have you hang on till after the news. For the best pop culture. I did not do that on purpose. I did not plan <laughs> on doing setup. that to you. But I did. Wait so you're going to have to wait. Breath. And this is this is incredible. Just to bait you a little bit. Uh, the best pop culture of all time. Lohan. Dancing with the Stars. And Kristen Chenoweth. Hugh Hefner. And Stephen Hawking. Are all part of pop culture. Wow. And you know, if you it's the first time you're listening to the show, we ease into the serious stuff. Coming up after this, we're also going to have the local news. We're going to also discuss sports, which is very brief. Some legal observations. And then usually between 8 and 9 o'clock is when we get into the serious business of the day called politics and economics. The best pop culture of all time when we return on Radio Superbity, Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk, 1160. Keep that going. I love that. Cowboy. Would you have him playing at your uh, campaign party, Kid Rock? Yes. Man, when I run for president in 2020, Kid Rock's going to be my posse. When I travel around the country, I'm going to have a posse. But see, now, 
That would make sense. You have Kid Rocket, your campaign, because you're a lot cooler than me. I'm much cooler than <laughs> Sissy Mitt. <laughs> I mean, come on now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the American Jerry, a Bulldog Nation member, shared with me something last night, and I was cracking up by text. They pointed out something that I just found was, I said, my God, you're right. They said, watch Rick Santorum and say to yourself, my God, he's the scarecrow. And Wizard of Oz. He, he's got the mannerisms of the Scarecrow. Then they said, watch the mannerisms of Mitt Romney, Mr. Stiff, and he's the Tin Man. Newt Gingrich is like Oz behind there, the big old fat guy. <laughs> and Ron Paul is like a, uh, a witch. <laughs> he's Dorothy. Threw water on him, he would just... <laughs> he's Dorothy. He wants to Sorry, are you Paul supporters, Bernie Kunkel, and so forth and so on. I know You know I love you guys. <laughs> But I thought it was pretty funny. All right, now I built this up pretty good. And you're saying, Bulldog, you're saying you got a Hall of Fame uh, pop culture item. And I ought to save it for the last, but I'm not. I'm going to use it first. Go for it. Go for it. This is from the Courier Journal, which covers Louisville and the state of Kentucky and Indiana. I am not making this up. Okay. I've got to read it to make sure I get it right. During the National Farm Machinery Show last week, the Godfather Strip Club claims competitor Trixie's Lounge scrolled a defamatory message about its girls on a large electronic display. Oh, no. Let me break that down. Godfather says Trixie's defamed them. Pictures of the message, which claimed the girls were unattractive, among other things, probably like give you the clap, soon oh. ended up on such social media websites as Facebook, causing negative and derogatory comments about the Godfather, according to the suit filed Wednesday in Jefferson Circuit Court. Ladies and gentlemen of the American jury, do you want to know why you want my newsletter, why you want my blog, why you want to listen to Real Talk 1160 from 7 to 9 a.m.? This isn't on the other radio stations around here. This isn't on the Drudge Report. It's not in the Enquirer. The Bulldog finds things that no one else does. Now, let me continue. The suit names Trixie's as well as the attached Knockout Sports Saloon. The Godfather and Trixie's are a little over a mile apart on Preston Highway. You can see it now, can't you? The Godfather girls walking by Trixie's. Trixie's girls walking by the Godfather saying, Mm. we don't like them. The lawsuit claims the message is false and defamatory and was made public with malice and intent to cause damage to the Godfather's business. The suit alleges the club suffered injury to its reputation for having the finest girls in town and was exposed to public hatred, contempt, scorn, shame, and ridicule. Claims made in filing a lawsuit give only one side of the case. No one at Trixie's could be immediately reached for a comment. The suit seeks compensatory and punitive damages. I want everybody, the ladies and gentlemen, the American jury to know that I have reached out to Trixie's. And I'm going to investigate this to find out what was said. What was said. Did Trixie's accuse those fine-looking ladies at Godfather for smelling bad, for sweating too much at the table dances? What was defamatory? Here's some more questions. How are the lawyers being paid? Do you tell your wife that you represent a strip club? How do you become the lawyer for a strip club? These are all important legal questions. But there is a turf war in Louisville. You know, like, Texas has a whorehouse in it. Louisville has a turf war between Godfather Strip Club and Trixie's. Just a mile apart on Preston Highway. You got to be careful messing with the Godfather. You know what? I'm going to bet on the Godfather in this dispute. The Godfather filed the lawsuit. The Godfather's being aggressive. Maybe they could settle. Will it be a class action lawsuit? I bet you they make them an offer they can't refuse. How dare Trixie's? How dare Trixie's talk about the Godfather's girls in this manner?
How dare them? Have you ever been to Godfather's Trixie's TC? I have not. Uh, n- no, I have not. Are we I on the air? Not. No, I have not. <laughs> I have not. Jacob, have you? No. Jacob shakes his head. Yes. Who's better, Godfather's or Trixie's? No idea. He says he has no idea. He must have been blind when he went in. Oh, it's such a debate. Godfathers or Trixies? What was on that large electronic display? Not large electronic device. Large electronic display. They scrolled a defamatory message claiming the girls were unattractive. Those girls at Godfather are just unattractive. Among other things. Hmm. What are those other things? Hall of Fame pop culture. Did you not agree? Oh, definitely. Strip club wars. That's it. That's it. Now, one thing though, I bet you Godfather's Pizza is better than Trixie's Pizza. Absolutely. God, can you imagine eating a pizza made by a strip club? <laughs> yay! 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 <laughs> I'm gonna run down for lunch here. Hey. Be back in an hour. <laughs> I never forget going to a legal seminar at Holiday Inn down in uh, the last exit in Lexington going south. I forget the name of that exit. And I want to tell you something. I was sitting there at a legal seminar. It was lunchtime. And the lawyer, Jim West, goes, hey, you want to go over to uh, Pure Gold? And I said, no, not really. Why? They said, well, there's really no place to eat here, and they have a lunch buffet over there. I said, you're kidding me. He said, no, there's a lunch buffet over there. I said, all right. So I went over there. I want to tell you right now. I left. The lunch buffet was bad, and everything else was bad, too. I, and listen, I am not self-righteous, but I'm sorry. Strip clubs smell. They just got a smell about them. Yeah. 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 Uh, Lindsay, That's what I've heard. Lindsay Lohan says no more clubbing. She says she's clean and sober. Good for Lindsay Lohan. Uh, I've already talked about the good girl every man wishes could be bad. Kristen Chenoweth. The new da- season 14 Dancing with the Stars lineup is Gavin DeGraw. 35, singer-songwriter. Yeah. Donald Driver, the wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Roshorn Fegan, 20, is a Disney Channel star. Melissa Gilbert, Laura from Little House on the Prairie. Catherine Jenkins, 31, operatic pop singer from Wales. Sensible Don, Real Talk 1160 sidekick. <laughs> Gladys Knight, 67, R&B star with the pips. Woo-hoo. William Levy, 29, Cuban-American, telenovela hot throb. Maria Menonos, 33, TV entertainment reporter. Martina Navratilova, 55, tennis legend. Yeah. Sherry Shepard, 44, one-fifth of the View crew. Jack Wagner, 52, soap opera stalwart. And the man who broke Heather Locklear's heart again. Chuck? Chuck Holbrook broke it first. Jack Wagner's now broke. No, it was Chuck Holbrook, then uh, Richie Sambora, and then Jack Wagner. Now, weren't they on the same soap opera? They are both on Melrose Place. That is correct. Uh Now, last but not least, and this is who I'm betting on. This is who I'm rooting for to go all the way. Bulldog Nation, can't we get behind Jaleel White? You say, Jaleel White, (laughs) Bulldog. Who's Jaleel White? Really? Urkel, baby. Urkel. From Family Matters. You do a great Urkel. Do that again. Oh, that guy was. Did I do that? I tell you right now, Urkel is on Dancing with the Stars. I bet you you're right. Uh, yeah, we I've got a root for Urkel. Don't Urkel we? all the way. I mean, come on, man. Urkel in 2012, and, baby. And this lineup, we got to go for Urkel. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, we could be guys and root for the hottest one, Maria Minonos. Nah, nah, nah. Urkel, 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 Urkel. 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 <laughs> Chris Brown and Rihanna were singing together in a nightclub in Orlando, and all their friends are upset because they might get back together and they'll beat the hell out of her oh, again. Oh, it's a publicity stunt. I already talked about you, Hefner. Uh, Stephen Hawking, last but not least in pop culture, he apparently frequented a California swingers club uh, all the time. You know what? If you're in Stephen Hawking's condition, good for his pals. Go for it. (laughs) Sports is light, guys. Here's sports. I'm going to do sports in less than a minute. Uh, Xavier loses again to St. Louis, 79-59. You see Marquette tonight at 7 p.m. on ESPN2. Buckeyes at Northwestern at 8. Red Hawks at Bowling Green at 7. Hoosiers beat Michigan State. Big win, 70-55. NBA, Kobe not only has a broken nose, he's also got a concussion. Mayweather demands Manny Pacquiao take less than 50% of the fight. Bulldog note, 
This is from Pac. Mayweather can kiss my mm. In the NFL, it has been 64 years since the NFL played a game on Wednesday. This year opens on Wednesday. Roger Goodell says to avoid conflict with the Democratic National Convention. It's an outrage. Let's all boycott that game. <laughs> we come back, local and regional news. The Strip Club Wars on Real Talk 1160. Simon Kitten takes on Gallatin County tonight. They'll be in the 8th Regional Championship. Pre-game starts at 7.30. Steve Jarnicky has the pregame, then tip off at 8 o'clock right here on Real Talk 1160. And now back to the Bulldog. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. One science entry. The cholesterol drugs, the FDA is concerned, cause memory loss. The FDA is requiring warnings now. On Lipitor, Socor, and Crestor. Bulldog note. Are those cholesterol drugs or transformers? <laughs> Lipitor, Socor, Crestor. They sound like transformers. They do. You're right. <laughs> uh, Chris from Mount Healthy. This is too, too, too good. By the way, during my show, if you have something witty or wise that you would like to text to me, my phone number is 859 859- 250-2527, and we have countless people that take me up on this offer. Uh, a regular, Chris from Mount Healthy says, relative to the Godfathers and Trixies in Louisville, he says, I've been to both of the clubs, and neither one had attractive girls. They all looked like they were on heroin. The only good thing about Louisville is that most of the bars serve until 4 a.m. little tip there wow. for you. Uh, in local news, Road trip. NKU funding could be cut. Funding could be cut. You know what? Everybody at Bulldog Nation Radio, or excuse me, Real Talk 1160, we don't get together enough. We need to have like more parties together, bond or something, you know, so we don't hate each other as much. <laughs> Jacob, I'm getting, I'll be honest with you, Jacob, I think I need to hang out with you. Maybe I'll like you a little bit. Maybe learn a little bit about you so I don't disdain you as you sit there and video me. He's extending a, uh, the olive branch here. What, <laughs> what, what, what is this? TJ Lane. Uh, we will soon find out if he has a soul. He will either be crushed by the weight of what he has done when he realizes what, what he has done, or he will be indifferent. You know, that's the way it always is, TC. It's one or the other. These guys like the, the shooter and uh, Gabby Giffords, he's yeah. an, he's a, I mean, he doesn't yeah, he give it Or they say, holy cow, what the hell have I done? It's going to be one or the other. I think this guy's a space cadet. Uh, the he, pro- he, he didn't know any of the people. He said, didn't know him, just shot him at random. I don't believe that because he's gotten to a lawyer. Because ha- it just so happened random that he went to middle school with these kids and hung out with them, and then they weren't part of his clique, and one of them was dating his ex-girlfriend. Nah, baby, nah. He went to that table on purpose. The prosecutor says, TC, that he's not well. So yeah. something's been revealed to them that we're like, this guy's not well. But, you know, anytime a 17-year-old or anybody can just randomly pull a trigger and shoot people, they're not well. That's messed up. They're not well. You know, there's only a few people I could shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, that's a, that's a hell of a thing to have on your conscience. Right, right. Uh, classes re- resume Friday at Chardon High School. I say just let them all off. Although Friday maybe not a bad day to bring them back and kind of a slow day. Yeah. Uh, T.J. Lane used the 22. He told police the victims were random, like T.C. just pointed out. I don't believe that because one of them was dating his girlfriend. Uh, the death total is three. Here's the update. Uh, dad is our Demetrius Ulan, 16, Russell King, 17, and the first boy that died, Daniel Parmator, 16. Uh, prosecutors have until March 1st to charge him. It's expected that he will be charged as an adult. One victim, the female, Joy Rickers, has been released from the hospital, and the remaining victim is still in the hospital. You know, there's been some discussions about, you know, what do you do? How do you advise your kids about this? I'm glad my kids aren't in school, but here is something. Like, he apparently shot a couple of them in the back of the head, and I don't think you can expect teenagers to react heroically, you know, unlike the teacher that chased him out, the assistant football coach. But, T.C., when I was down at Bill Demetrix Karate School, we did, you know, we focused. I mean, one thing I loved about karate is the simplicity. Karate is all short, strong. Kicks don't have to be fancy like Taekwondo. You basically, in karate, you learn how to fight in a phone booth, which is the way you usually got to fight. If you're in a bar and you get in a fight, you don't have time to say, hold on a second, let me warm up. Let me stretch my legs. Right. And, and, you know, I mean, I'm just telling you, you're going cold. So Bill Demetrix, my sensei, he always taught us, you learn how to fight in a phone booth. 
which is unique. You're talking about short kicks. I mean, I can do a snap kick to a groin, knee, shins, stomach. I don't have to kick a guy in the head. Right. And it's it's short, strong blocks, punches, and everything else. And you say, Bulldog, why are you talking about this? Well, here's the reason why. Is that's what they focused on down there in the school. Now, we did self-defense. We practiced taking guns and knives away. I mean, we actually did these demonstrations. And I tell you right now, I was blown away how simple the techniques were, how effective the techniques were. I could demonstrate them with with, uh, maybe a gun and a knife. You bring in a plastic gun or a knife uh, tomorrow, Jacob, I'll demonstrate. I'm being serious. I'll demonstrate on the video camera. Bring in, a, bring in a fake gun and a fake knife, and I'm going to demonstrate on video tomorrow how you take away a gun and a knife. Now, based upon my learning that, I, just, I decided a long time ago, if I'm ever faced with a situation where I sense I'm going to be killed, and I hate to say this, I mean, you should do what they tell you to do, but there are exceptions. I just feel like as a guy, I got an instinct that's going to say, this guy is going to kill me. And if you got a chance, I say take it. So if somebody is far away from me, you have less options. But if a guy's up close to you, and I'm going to demonstrate this tomorrow. Don't forget, Jacob, because this will be neat for our video cast. I'm going to demonstrate how you take a gun and knife away somebody easily and quick if it's in your back. I'm being serious. A guy's got a gun in your back. I'm going to show you how easy it is to take that thing away from him. Same thing, gun being held to your head right in front of you. Knife, they got a knife. Same thing. It's amazing how easy these techniques are. Now, if you're a wimp wagon, you can't do it. But, I mean, TC, you're tough enough to do it. I'm tough enough to do it. They're really simple techniques. And I'm just telling you, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, you need to take your chance of doing something if you think you're going to go down. TC, I am not going to kneel and be a victim of an assassination or an execution. If I got a chance, I'm taking it. And let me tell you what you have more than anything else, folks. Surprise. I guarantee you right now, a guy with the gun holding on you, he doesn't think for a snowball's chance in hell you're going to make a move. So you have a surprise, and that move that you make, which I'm going to demonstrate tomorrow, is incredible. Now, this doesn't really apply to this shooting because, you know, you you can't expect high school kids to react like an adult that's trained in martial arts. But I'm just telling you, folks, don't ever let them execute you. If you think they're going to kill you anyway, go down fighting. Not to mention the fact you might scare them. You might right. not get hurt as bad. You might not get shot as, you know. You got a chance to make it. You got a chance got a to chance. make it. Yeah. You got a chance to make it. I'm not kidding you. I'll, I'll bet you, TC, tomorrow when you see, I want to see this. these techniques. Jacob, don't forget. Uh, it's incredible. It's so, I mean, when I was doing says, man, that's simple. Especially with a gun in your back. You think, oh, my God, a gun in your back. Oh, my God, it's, it's not hard. You know, yesterday afternoon I was thinking about the shooting and, and what was going on there, and I thought, I'm going to ask Bulldog on the air because you did you had a, a great uh, rant yesterday about um, liberties and liberties. infringement upon liberties with, with laws and that. What do you think? Maybe make it a state law nationwide. It's a law. Metal detectors in every school. Uh, I think that um, uh, I'm torn – you know, there's part of me that says yes, but if I had to decide, I'd say no, and here's the reason why. A metal detector is not going to keep them out. If you really want to kill somebody, you're going to get a gun in there some way, somehow. You're going to break in the night before. You're yeah. going to sneak it in. I mean, I just think it's impossible. And when you look at the total population and how often this happens, it's still a rare thing. Yeah. So I, I'm generally against the metal detector thing. Okay. Yeah. I'm generally against it. Another infringement upon our liberty. It might be, but then again, we're talking about kids. That really shouldn't Absolutely. That kind of Absolutely. Thing. By the yeah. way, I, I will say this, TC, and I hate to be prejudicial, but you know, your basic suburban, rural uh, school in America. Now, I'm not saying these things don't happen there. They can. But I have to admit, I guess there would be some inner city schools that you hear crazy stories about, like where there's some hardcore gang members in that school Different ball game. Throw in the metal detectors. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, let's face it. I, my guess is at Compton in L.A., there might be a bigger need for metal detectors than at Simon Kenton High School. Well, you know, and I've heard educators say uh, that they've talked to students, say, well, why do you guys fight in school all the time? They say, well, if we don't fight in school, in other words, if we're outside off school property, we can get arrested. That's a great point. So they fight in school. It's a great point. A uh, product question, a scent port from Bath & Body. Have any of you purchased a scent port from Bath & Body? It's an aroma diffuser which plugs into the wall. 
an aroma diffuser. Have you purchased a scent port? No, I have not. If you have, email me at eric at ericdieters.com, and I'll explain why. Suit over a man's death at an ebriation clinic settled. This is sad but funny. Uh, the Prestora Center in West Virginia has agreed to settle a $1 million lawsuit with the family of a man who died of a cocaine overdose at the center's Dunbar Inebriation Shelter. The lawsuit claims that workers failed to regularly check on the man after he was dropped off the shelter by local police and he died nine hours later. You know what? You're supposed to dry out in your cocaine overdose at the Inebriation Center. Wow. We come back a few more legal items, some life observations, as we slowly move into the big election night last night, where Sissy Romney won big on Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. I rest my case about distractions in the studio. You see what <laughs> happens, TC? Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I got some stuff for you here. Go ahead. Before we get to the the, the, the hard news. Go ahead. You know, today is Leap Day. It is the 29th day Leap of February. Day. We talked about that, you know, because of uh, the calendar and everything. But there are some legends and traditions. According to an old Irish legend or possibly history, St. Bridget struck a deal with St. Patrick to allow women to propose to men and not just the other way around every four years. This is believed to have been introduced to balance the traditional roles of men and women in a similar way in how Leap Day balances the calendar. In some places, Leap Day has been known as Bachelor's Day for the same reason. A man was expected to pay a penalty, such as a gown or money, if he refused a marriage proposal from a woman on Leap Day. Wow. Guys, if you're a wow, wow, bachelor, wow, don't wow, leave wow. the house. That's Do pretty good. not leave the house today. <laughs> Uh, join me in studio is uh, Dr. Kurtzman. And Dr. Kurtzman, it's funny that you're joining me because right up next is federal agents on Tuesday arrested a Dallas air area doctor accused of bilking Medicare of $350 million over a five-year period. One doctor, 50-year-old Jock Roy. Let's break that down. Three hundred and fifty million over five years, seventy million dollars a year. Uh, can you say greed? You know, how about just a couple mil? That is unbelievable. I, this is the first time I've heard that. It's from Wall that Street is, Journal this morning. How, how does that happen? I mean, how does the Medicare see bills coming in for seventy million dollars in one year? One doc. and not say, gee. Maybe he's uh, billing a little bit too much there. Just tells you what our government's uh, all screwed up. That is amazing. That is terrible. The New York Police Department, this has been in the news, that uh, they are, they basically keep the Muslims in New York City under surveillance. And the Justice Department, Holder, may investigate that practice. Practice Bulldog note, the irony. The feds are investigating a city securities measure, but not any city, New York City, and the feds are, instead of, instead of investigating the Muslims, they're investigating the police for checking out on the Muslims. Hmm. By the way, I want to tell you something about profiling. Profiling should not be unconstitutional. I'm going to give you an example. Who has been the primary blower up of airplanes? Muslims. Radical extreme Muslims. So why wouldn't you profile radical, you know, people that might be a radical extreme Muslim? I don't see what's unconstitutional about profiling people that may blow up an airplane. Now, you shouldn't just profile, okay, we're going to profile blacks for blacks. But I'm going to give you an example. If you have a neighborhood, let's say you have a white neighborhood. I'm just using this as an example. You have a white neighborhood where there's been a series of robberies and burglaries by blacks. They know that. They've been identified. They've seen that. That's what. Well, if you see the blacks in the neighborhood, why wouldn't you go, hey, you're a black in this white neighborhood. What are you doing here? Same thing. Let's say whites were burglarizing a predominantly black neighborhood. You saw whites walking around. Why wouldn't the police say, hey, what are you doing here? you got to have more description than just they're black or white. I mean, you know, height, I, weight, age. I disagree. Well, I am for profiling. Profiling solves crime. Now, see, I was profiled once, so I have a totally different view on the matter. Well, I used to always, I used to always tell the young black guys on my football team, TC, I said, I'm glad I'm not a, uh, a black man growing up in America still because I used to tease them. You know, we were out there planning independence. Let me see. The independence, you have the Syphils, you have the Stowers, uh, maybe a few others, and that's it. There's not a lot of blacks in independence. And I used to tease them. I said, I can see people driving by and say, look at all those black guys playing football out here. What are they doing out here? 
And there's no. then there's me, the one white guy throwing the passes. <laughs> well, I was on I was on seventy five where there was a mixture of black, white, all different kind of races, and I got pulled over for doing sixty miles an hour. That's terrible. Yeah. This is an email that I got. Now, since my Kentucky issues come to light, I am on guard, and I have already been tried to be trapped lots of times. People call me up asking me a legal question, sending me an email, like, you got to get up pretty early in the morning to trick me. (laughs) Now, get this email. This is an email that I got, Dr. Kurtzman and TC. Hey there, Mr. Dieters. Got a theoretical question for you. Let's say there's a guy that goes to school. He has some business interests in the adult entertainment industry. He is basically a reincarnation of Meyer Lansky, but overall a pretty nice guy. He needs to say that he works at a legal office as a filing clerk, but he doesn't really work there. A smart attorney is hired just to make a few calls once in a while and just say that this guy works as a filing clerk if anyone asks. He is willing to pay you, say he works two days a week, one day for four hours, another day for ten hours. How much would it be worth in your pocket to do this? I would pay you to say I work there, and I will buy you lunch once a week. All you got to do is say I showed up and did some paperwork. Doesn't matter what kind. It could be drawing pictures in a heroin den by Finley Market. I need to be able to get out of the office I work in now and basically use this as an excuse so I can have time to operate my other business interests. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I guess it depends how good a lunch it is. Yeah, what, respo- what is going on with that? Now, let me tell you what my email response to this was. <laughs> Meyer Lansky, huh? <laughs> a nice Meyer Lansky, he said. <laughs> is that hilarious? Mm. How do people think this up? I don't know. My trip to the Dayton Federal Courthouse yesterday, you walk in the federal courthouses and there's a picture of the president and the vice president. There's a picture of Joe Biden all happy and smiling. He's smiling really big. And there's a picture of Obama. Not smiling. Come on, president, smile. I guess he doesn't like Dayton. Jeez, old Pete. Uh, Army. The Army has replaced soda stations with what they're calling hydration stations. Oh, and before we play the feel good song, I got to say some bad news. How bad is it? California teenagers, unemployment is 35%. The adults is 11%. Teenagers are trying to help parents in tough economy, which is harder to do. They're strain all over, according to Sacramento Bee. Apparently, in California, we have more and more teenagers trying to work to help ends. Isn't that terrible? And they say, yeah. according to Sacramento Bee, it's getting real, a big problem. But the economy's proven, improving. You got the feel-good song? The feel-good song is ready. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I apologize that the feel-good song is about breaking up, but it makes me feel good. It's a good song. It's by REO, a classic band who came to the St. Cecilia Church Festival two years ago, and I sponsored it. Listen Listen to these words. Great breakup song, folks. If you're breaking up today, give them this. Don't break up today. any relief. It could be expensive for a guy to break up today. I swallowed my pride for you. I lied for you, Meyer Lansky. <laughs> this is a great line here. We've all been there. Don't you love this song? Nice tune. Time for me to fly. Definitely don't take a cruise. By the way, I'm happily married still, folks. I just like the song. Patty's getting worried, though. You know what? In some European countries, yes. if a man refuses a woman's proposal on February 29th, he has to buy her 12 pairs of gloves. That sucks. The intention she wears one pair a month <clears throat> to hide the embarrassment of not having an engagement ring. Oh. <laughs> I believe I've had enough. Oh, let's get this. Here you go. Greatest breakup song of all time. Listen to this. That is great. Dr. Kurtzman, have you broken up with one of your ladies lately? I have not. You haven't? 
I have not, but I better hide today being a single guy. <laughs> <laughs> I could be paying a lot of fines. <laughs> Don't you agree that this is a great breakup song? It's a beautiful hey, song. Instead of texting or tell him in person, just send him this tune on your iTunes and say, listen to this. <laughs> That's pretty sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for me to say goodbye. Now, there's well, got, got a little bit more here, don't we? We can't play all of it. Can, well, can we play a little bit more? We can't afford it. Before the refrain? This, we'll just we'll, we'll kill it before the refrain, okay? All right. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. We can't have wasteful spinning in the studio. That's the thing. <laughs> Ah, that's over. Never mind. Thank you, TC. Only the Bulldog can make everybody happy with a breakup song. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. How are you I'm feeling, I'm pretty happy. Now yeah. listen. That now was listen. a great one. I substitute. Jacob, you happy? Because you played Johnny Cash, Boy Named Sue. I was going to have Johnny Cash, It Ain't Me, Babe. I, I don't know that one. It ain't me. It's another breakup song. Is it? It ain't me, babe. It ain't me you're looking for, babe. We come back. We're going to talk about brainwashing. On Radio Superbity, Real Talk 1160. Make sure you join Michael Savage today at noon, noon to three on Real Talk 1160. And now, back to the Bulldog. This is Eric Dieters, the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. All right, folks. The brainwashing of our youth in schools. I tell you what, I've recovered Parker. Parker's Parker's with me politically. My boy gets it. My daughter lost. But it starts in schools and it continues. Do you know that Americans actually believe the economy's improving? <laughs> what the hell? Because the news media is telling them the economy's improving. Right. They also, more and more, are beginning to believe in global warming. I tell you right now, doesn't anybody have a filter to their brain that says, Jack Wagon status is turned off? You know what I mean? Some of that Obama syrup. Yes, it, doctor. It's working. I mean, you hear all these people repeat, 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 the news media, the liberal media, the economy's improving. Uh, it's just unbelievable that people are swallowing this. And take a look at gas prices. I'm not sure. You know, and they're saying, well, they were that high when Bush was in. No, they were actually about $1.80, $1.90 a gallon. And people all over Facebook, all over, well, that's a bunch of crap. They were $4 then. It's like they're the highest levels they've ever been at this time of year in history. As I reported yesterday, four times the amount of stories four years ago with Bush. Did you ever find that Colonel Jessup cut? All right. Lady, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, I've been calling Mitt Romney a sissy. He is. I've campaigned for some sissies. There's nothing worse than campaigning for a sissy and having sissies. Am I the only person that when I watched a few good men, I thought Tom Cruise was a sissy, and I thought Colonel Jessup was a man. Tom Cruise is always a sissy. <laughs> I, am I the only one that said felt bad for Colonel Jessup when he was hauled off to be arrested? Ladies and gentlemen, here you go. Tell him. Yes. Sissy. Cold chills. You want me on that wall? Yes! Dump. <laughs> nah, we'll let that one slide. Dump. But you know what? I just, wanted, I just wanted to part of the piece. I want to tell you right now. I get pumped up listening to that. Whoever wrote that, 
Whoever wrote those words, that screenplay, he deserved the Oscar if he didn't get the Oscar. That was incredible. Is that not incredible yeah. writing? Oh, it is. And Jack, you I mean, cursed the hair. For, oh my God. Jack just delivers that. And, Jack, line. and Colonel Jessup's old school like here because he does stand on that wall. And guess what? There's two, Tom Cruise, little Mister Clean Little Lawyer, Jack guy, little wimp. Yeah. By the way, everybody knows it's sad that San Diego died. I mean, I'm watching that movie. It was terrible that San Diego died. But those two poor people that were on trial, they shouldn't have been on trial for it. Yeah. If Don't I didn't you know, love that clip? I do love that clip. If I didn't know the voice, I would have thought that was the Bulldog's rant. I mean, that sounds <laughs> Wait, right hey, out of the radio. Hey, hey, can we add that to my clips? That's got to be that. a regular. I like to add that to my yeah. clips that I play. All right. That that is that has got to be part of the bulldog mantra. By the way, I play that for a reason, folks, as we begin to discuss politics. Do you look at Rick Santorum? Do you look at Mitt Romney? Do you look at Ron Paul? Do you look at Newt Gingrich? And do you look at Barack Obama and say to yourself, there's a man's man and a woman's man? That's the kind of guy I want leading this country. No. We elect establishment Republicans. We elect liberal establishment Democrats. We don't elect people like that anymore. The last one we elected, you know, I, and I admire George Bush because he did fight out. George Bush won was not a wimp. But Ronald Reagan was probably the last person that we elect. And by the way, I know there's a difference between a colonel and the Marine Corps than the President of the United States. But the attitude is there. Oh, pumped up. Uh, Mitt Romney, he wins Michigan and Arizona. He wins Arizona by like 20 points. He wins Michigan. Uh, his money's got to – those of you that think Santorum, with all due respect, Rebecca, Bulldog Nation member, I know you're working hard for Santorum. He's going to seal it up on Super Tuesday, just like happened in Michigan. Uh, Santorum had a lead, Dr. Kurtzman, and here comes the money, and he, Romney blows him by. That's what's going to happen in Ohio. The money's coming, folks. And, a, and when the money comes, there goes Santorum on Super Tuesday. There's a lot of money, but I think Santorum's probably going to be able to raise more money now with his strong showing. I mean, nah, a, nah, nah, nah. His money's going to dry up, Doc. Sam, and Romney's going to raise more money. He's got the delegates. People don't realize this. He is just gathering the delegates, and he'll finish off Super Tuesday. Santorum lost the Michigan Catholic vote. He lost the Michigan Catholic vote. But it was a close race, though. I think it was too close for you know for why Romney. Was, you know why it was Michigan. close? It was an open primary. They let the Democrats vote, and okay, Santorum yeah, that, was robo calling the Democrats. And guess yeah. guess who wanted Santorum to make it close? The Democrats. Yeah. Where he? Yeah. By the way, he won the Democratic vote like fifty five to fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Now that now see that I don't understand why the they did it. Dog, why they do an open analysis? I don't understand it why they be do an open primary. No, I, no I, I disagree with that. I, I don't. Yeah. It shouldn't be. I don't it, think it should be either. It shouldn't be. You have reason. the general election that's open, right. not the primaries. Just for that reason, there uh, of, of, of you know how that skews the 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 outcome of the votes. Uh, some more fun stuff. Obama claims after he's president, he's going to buy a vote. <laughs> Yay! I got a free campaign tip for Santorum. If you ever reference a speech that makes you want to puke. Make it a Barack Obama speech and not JFK. You don't want to say a speech by JFK, who is a martyr in the cause of American liberty, made you puke. This is the same guy, ladies and gentlemen, who said, ask not what you can do, your country can do for you, but right. what you can do for your country. This is a great leader, a great speech giver. You don't say anything he said makes you puke. Right. Good tip. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very, yeah. Very, good very good tip. Yeah. You, you can say you can disagree with it. Don't say what JFK tells you. Puke. And by the way, I'm going to defend JFK. JFK was a conservative Democrat. Yeah. He backed down Khrushchev. You know, he was a tax cut guy. I mean, you know, JFK. Now, no, Mitt, he was a nice mix. He was a nice blend, I think. I got I to gotta, I gotta tell you about Mitt's gas. I haven't commented on this because Mitt's there's so gas. many his gaffes. Oh, These are gas. so funny. My <laughs> wife drives a couple Cadillacs. That's yeah. the way to appeal, isn't it, Dr. Kurtzman, to the, <laughs> to the blue-collar guy? She just doesn't drive one Cadillac. She's got a couple. She's got a different color for every day. <laughs> got one for Tuesday and Wednesday, and then one for Monday, Friday, and Saturday. <laughs> Maybe she should buy that Volt first. Yeah, <laughs> and then he knows, yeah exactly. That's a smart move. Yeah. And then he knows. He knows the NASCAR owners. My God. 
And then he said, yeah, he, he, he says, Mitch well. Rich says he has no chance. Did he have his name on one of the cars, uh, Santorum? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, he walked by it. He, he was walking through Daytona and said, oops, this, this guy has as much chance getting a blue-collar man vote. The only blue-collar vote he can get is the white blue-collar non-union man who hates Obama anyway. That's yeah. the only chance he got. Yeah. How about this? <laughs> Mitt can at least rest under the shade of the trees in Michigan that he says are the perfect height. I love Kentucky. I love the height of the trees. <laughs> the color of the water. What the? Ugh. Who's writing his material? Oh, Hallmark. my gosh. And then, and then you give a speech. I tell you right now, I learned this a long, long time ago. Because I've made this mistake before. Every political operative has, and you only make it once, and you never make it again. The too big a room for your party. 60,000-seat arena to speak to 1,200 people. Not a good idea. No. You want a 500-room facility with 1,200 people. Yeah, yeah. They're standing, standing out in the hall. Yeah, that's what you want. They couldn't get in. Uh, Senator Olympia Snow in Maine is not going to seek re-election. She's liberal. Who cares? Newt ought to quit, don't you think, Dr. Kurtzman? He goes down and hides in Georgia. He, he hides in Georgia. He does. He won't quit, though, because he hates uh, Romney so much. He wants to break up the vote and have it go to, uh, without a majority, going to the convention. We come back. More Radio Superbity on Real Talk 1160. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Give me some green water. You got a green water promo there, big guy? We have green water for you today. You ready? Yes. Two all-beef patty special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Sounds really healthy compared to great-tasting, live, slimy, living green water. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, <laughs> wash it down with a full <laughs> glass of green water. Okay. You know, we, the water that we bring into the studio, we should dye green. Yeah, we should. Just kind of as a marketing technique, you know? We do that for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Obama's $18 billion tax gift, according to the Wall Street Journal, the government allowed GM to keep a carry-forward tax loss of $18 billion, which a regular bankruptcy would have wiped out. And in a 2011 working paper, J. Mark Ramsire of Harvard and Eric Rasmussen of Indiana University argue that by manipulating corporate tax rules by fiat, Treasury gave the firm and its owners, including the UAW, $18 billion more in assets. Thus, a Democratic administration gave a massive tax benefit to one of the party's biggest supporters. The other problem is the move put Ford and GM's other competitors at a disadvantage. Mr. Obama crowed yesterday about GM's highest profit in 100-year history. We'd be interested in to hear how its effective tax rate compares with Warren Buffett's secretary. Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, how about that? An $18 billion tax break. For GM and the UAW, did you get that kind of a tax break? No. Incredible. Incredible. Now, we all we hate regulation, do we not? Boys and girls, don't we hate regulation? Sure. Sure we do. Bulldog Nation, we hate regulations. Sure we do. We hate regulations. I'm going to tell you a story about regulations, boys and girls. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Do you read the Wall Street Journal? Sure. Sure you do. Environmentalists have long complained that the San Joaquin Sacramento River Delta's pumps would send water to Central Valley farmers in Southern California, trap and kill fish. We like fish. Sure we do. 2006, the Natural Resources Defense Council sued the U.S. Fish and Wildlife for issuing a biological opinion that supported pumping more water south because the agency didn't analyze how the pumping might affect the smelt. Do you know what a smelt is? Sure you don't. I don't. Do you know what a smelt is, Dr. Kurtzman? I don't know what a smelt is. It's a, a little bitty fish. A federal court ordered the agency to be more mindful of the smelt. So the agency demanded that the water regulators reduce pumping. The National Marine Fisheries Service has joined the fund by recommending that regulators restrict pumping to protect salmon, sturgeon, and the steelhead, too. These opinions have superseded the water contracts of farmers and resulted in 3.4 million acre feet of fresh water flowing into San Francisco Bay each year. Enough to irrigate over a million acres of land. More than 10,000 farm jobs have been lost as a result. Boys and girls, I need to say that again. More than 10,000 farm jobs have been lost as a result. And regional unemployment stands at about 15%. Environmentalists blame the water shortages on drought. But even in wet years, farmers aren't, can't get the water they're due. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the American jury, isn't a smell the sandwich at Frisch's? Isn't a smell? Isn't a smell a sandwich at Frisch's, Dr. Kurtzman? I do believe it is. Isn't it? I smelt that Oh, that's once. the patty melt. <laughs> it's not the smell, it's the patty melt. Now, is that incredible? 10,000 farm jobs. Yeah. yeah. I tell you right now. <sighs> By the way, prosecutors have just shut down a gambling site, get this, called Bodog. B-O-D-O-G. I, you know what? I think I checked out. Bulldog.com was not available. However, note to Brad Amster if you're listening. Bulldoggambling.com. <laughs> Let's get into online gambling. The new iPad. Do you have an iPad, Doc? I do not. I don't either. I, you know, this iPhone's all I need, man. It's I everything. Uh, March 7th, the new iPad comes out. All right. I'm going to ask you a question, Dr. Kurtzman. How many McDonald's would you guess are in China? Ooh. I know that's a very large growing market. I would guess... Uh, 3,000. Yeah, I, was, I would have guessed less. 1,400. All right. You know what? That This is a secret CIA operation. A secret. Look, Brad Amster's got it, buddy. You're on the ball, Brad. CIA operation to make China fat like America. CIA is, fun, is funding these McDonald's in China. Uh, Dippin' Dots, uh, they're needing a more, another bankruptcy loan of $2 million. You know, trying to save Dippin' Dots is like trying to save mice from cats. It's a lost cause. Yeah, Dippin I never. Dippin' Dots sucks. I never understood Dippin' Dots. Uh, the Dow, 13000 It closed above it for the first time and since 2008. Yeah, but just wait till there's something about Greece, and it'll go. Another quiz question, Dr. Kurtzman. How much beef is consumed in the United States a year, according to the USA Today, per person? Per person. How much beef are you eating a year? Per person, 30 pounds. Now, think again. How much, how much would you guess? A little higher. A little higher. 60 pounds. I wanted you to read 57.4, and I could say, oh, you got it right on the button. I was guessing. 57.4 pounds. Now, I'd like to put 57.4 pounds of hot dogs, brats, hamburgers, steak, filet mignon, prime rib, meatloaf, in a pile until you got to 57.4. That would be a good visual. Well, that's one pound a week. You can get that at Brooks Meats for about 100 bucks, I think, can't you? I hope so. You, seriously, man. That's a lot of beef going through the old colon. Yeah, it is. I love meat, and meat loves me. How much vegetable, or how many? How much do we have? A, any kind of uh, any numbers on veggies? Or how much veggies? green water? Yeah, there we go. How many? How much green water can you keep down? That's green it. water is a great drink. <laughs> Don't you love green water? Can't wait for St. Patrick's Day to drink some of that. Oh yeah, it's coming up, isn't it? Next it month, is. isn't it? We have. Let me see. We're going to have the SEC tournament. And the big, the big Ten and Big East have tournament, don't they? Yeah, yes, they do. Yeah. we got got all of March coming. Oh, by the way. March Madness. You remember the other day when you were talking about us doing a live broadcast on the trolley? Yes. Guess who think that, thinks that's a great idea? Who does? Our program director. Well, I say we're going to do it then. The only thing is, he says, because of you know the buildings and that, we might get some interference. He wants to test it. Maybe we can pull some strings with Sensible Don. He wants to test it on a Metro bus. I say we test it. You know, do the route that the trolley would do. I like love that miles. idea. Yeah. I'm sure the mayor would be all over that. Yeah, he'd, yeah, we'd get free publicity for the mayor. Assuming he's not out of town on a another trip to learn about these <laughs> streets. He's got to go to he's got to go to Dubai. He's got to go to Dubai. Uh, hold my calls and my emails. I got to go to Dubai. <laughs> because they have a great trolley system there. Great John, streetcar. John Bick, my good buddy from Ropke Automotive, has sent me a text that says Santorum will win Super Tuesday. Just watch. I'll bet you an oil change against a free pizza. Well, I've got to ask you this question, John Bick. Are you talking about a delicious snappy tomato pizza or a Trisha's strip joint pizza? (laughs) Maybe we should throw a little Botox in on that. Did you hear about that controversy down in Louisville between the two strip clubs? I did not. Oh, yeah. The Godfather Strip Club has sued Trisha's Strip Club because Trish, Trixie's. Trixie's, Trixie's for writing on their electronic signboard saying that Godfather girls are unattractive, among other things. Oh, that sounds like a suit for Eric the Bulldog. Do you do Botox for the e- either of these clubs? I would like to. 
I was like, you know what? That'd be a good source of your business. You need to there. advertise in the dressing rooms. Let me just say they don't look at their faces a whole lot at the strip clubs. Ah, good point. Good point. There's other body parts hey, we hey, could take care hey, of. Hey, how often have you – how often – you remember watching Benny Hill? Benny Hill was the best. They'd show – you'd think it's a really attractive girl, and they'd turn around and you'd go, oh, my God. <laughs> ah. I used to love Benny Hill. Dr. Kurtzman, I'm going to give you a chance to promote yourself because I'm going to hog the end of the show. Well, it's springtime. It's time to start thinking about that. Those mommy's makeovers. There you go. We got a lot of women coming in now for the breast enhancement, for the for breast the, enhancement. For the liposuction, like a lot of tummy tucks going on. People really want to look good for the summer. Now is the time so they can be all healed up and ready to go. Hey, I am taking a vacation. I'm not going to say when, but I'm going to South Beach. I've never been to South Beach. Going to stay in a resort at South Beach, uh, my, me, my wife, and my son, and my stepson. And uh, I figure they're going to enjoy South Beach. But uh, can you, like, lipo all the fat out of me before I go so I don't have to work out? You just suck it all out so I can wear my Speedo on South Beach. Ooh. I don't know about that. What I don't do you like, think? I don't, hey, Jacob, I don't like the sound of that. He said, ooh. Eric in a he Speedo. Said, ooh. I don't think unless you're swimming competitively, you should be wearing a Speedo. I agree. I mean, is, <laughs> is, is there not anything more disgusting than men that wear Speedos on public beaches? Oh, especially I'm, a, I'm a swimming trunks man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, especially some of these men that uh, shouldn't even be on the beaches to start with. And then they're wearing a Speedo. <laughs> Sometimes you can't even see that they have a Speedo on. I've been on some trips where I couldn't even tell if it was a man or a woman. It was so how bad. about How about this? Women that shouldn't be wearing a bikini. <laughs> There's a lot of them out there. <laughs> yeah. They, they sh- need Dr. Kurtzman. They should come see me now. When we come back, Radio Superbity on Real Talk 1160. Make sure you check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Real Talk 1160, and join in the fun. And now back to the Bulldog. Eric Dieter's the Bulldog on Real Talk 1160. Remember, you can email me at eric at ericdieters.com during the show or anytime. Uh, that's text me, 859-250-2527, or email me at eric at ericdieters.com. Uh, I've got a suit and tie on if you watch the video cast, and the reason why is because I have to go meet with some clients at the Cincinnati Law Office at 915, 930, 10 o'clock. Then I have a television interview. I'm giving a local television station an exclusive with a client of mine in a high-profile case, and that's going to be at 11 o'clock, and I'm going to look sharp for the interview. Um, You'll be able to see it. I don't want to promote it yet because I don't want to make the other stations mad at me yet. (laughs) I'm friendly. But I'm, you know, I don't make any bones about it. Some, some are more friendly than, than others to me. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the American jury. We had a primary vote last night in Michigan, and in Arizona. I think there was like 29, 28 delegates total in both states. Uh, winner takes all in Arizona, uh, Michigan. I think it was the winner take all. But I'm going to tell you something. It's it's coming to Ohio. I mean, there, I think that there's an election in Washington. But the next big election is Super Tuesday, which is going to be right here in Ohio. So over the course of the next uh, couple weeks or week, there's going to be a lot of politicians coming in and out of here. Uh, my guess is we might score an interview or two of, of some of the candidates, although I'm not really concerned about that. But I know that the presidential candidates have contacted the radio station. I think one of the reasons why they do that, they're not stupid, you can communicate to a lot of you know more people. You want to talk to 50,000 people instead of going to an event with 500 people like Price Hill. With all due respect to Price Hill Chili, you can go to Price Hill Chili and meet 50 people versus 50,000 by doing an interview on a radio station. Um, so we're going to be covering it. You know how I feel about them all. You know, Ron Paul, I agree with his domestic side, lover of liberty. I disagree with some of his things on foreign policy and the Federal Reserve. I think the Federal Reserve ought to be audited. I, I don't get I don't get why the Federal Reserve isn't audited at all. Makes no sense to me. But the Federal Reserve has been a stabilizer. We would have much. We would have very serious, cr- much more crashes. And everybody says, "Well, that's okay to have severe crashes." Nah, not too much. Um, also, Newt Gingrich he needs to drop out. I mean, he's hunkered down in Georgia. You know, he isn't not listening to his own advice. He has zero chance, zero chance now to win the nomination unless Mitt Romney gets caught in bed with a live girl and Santorum with a dead dog. That's the only way Newt Gingrich is going to win. And Ron Paul would probably beat him. Uh, Santorum 
It has gotten he, he got off track. He went way. And by the way, the exit polls in Michigan, Doctor Kurtzman says, the social issues aren't happening out there with people. The economy is so bad that I don't think really people worry about contraceptives right now. They're worried about their jobs. I, I agree. I think economy is number one, and it almost always is in an election year. And they're trying to tell us the economy is strong and coming back. I don't see it. I think they're blowing a lot of smoke up places. Yeah, and then and then. And along with along with uh, Santorum's missteps, I mean, saying he wanted to puke at a JFK. Gosh, he blew it. He would have. He could have won Michigan if he never got off to that where he went. Uh, Ro- uh, Mitt Romney, on the other hand, continues to gaff, continues to be awkward. He's just awkward. He's he is a product of what he is. You know what? I got an old expression: "You are what you are." You know, you can't change it. I am what I am. I can't make myself that which I am not. And I can tell you this, uh, one of the greatest trial lawyers of all time is Jerry Spence. And Jerry Spence in his books gives lawyers the advice that you got to be yourself when you're talking to the jury. I can't go into a courtroom and try to be Johnny Cochran because what happens is, is they see the lack of sincerity and genuineness, and then there goes your credibility. So Mitt Romney, trying to act like he's a regular Joe, which he has to do on one hand, also reveals a lack of sincerity because there is no way that Mitt Romney can appeal to an average Joe because he's not an average Joe. He knows the NASCAR owners, not the NASCAR drivers, not the NASCAR fans. You know, I say this, I'm like, when I run for president in 2020, I'll be able to go speak in the back of a pickup truck in a county fair without a teleprompter and walk into an editorial boardroom or Wall Street and ask for a million dollars from somebody and feel comfortable in both forums. I have to admit, Chris Matthews said something last night on MSNBC, which is true. He said, Romney's kind of got the brains, but he doesn't have the, the right heart to connect to the people. Santorum is showing this heart, but you know he's kind of misguided a little bit. And that Obama has the perception that he's smart and he's also got some passion. And I think to myself, I start thinking of that famous head and heart speech that Thomas Jefferson wrote to his girlfriend. Should I follow my heart? Should I follow my head? It's a pretty good love letter. Um, you, could, you could just write it to your a girlfriend, uh, Dr. Kurtzman, and don't claim it's Thomas Jefferson. Make it your original. Uh, Joe Biden probably did that. <laughs> yeah, that's how he got her, didn't he? And, and I love the way you end the letter. You don't say goodbye. You say, I bid you adieu. I bid you adieu. That's how we talk today. That's good. That is good. I bid you adieu. But, uh, you know, I, I think to myself, well, if that's, if that's going to be the standard, I can debate them all, and I can also bring the passion. And why can't we find that? Why can't we have that in a candidate? I, I find this too interesting. I, I thought of this after listening to Matthew say that. You know, all these political pundits on every station and on every radio, you know what they are? They're a bunch of talkers. You know, they're always talking, but they're not doers. They're talkers. Talk, talk, talk. They're not doing, doing, doing. And I think to myself, you know, but they know a lot. So that's another thing we got to probably. I'd like to be able to combine the knowledge of like Michelle Malkin into somebody who's a doer that knows how to do things because that's what these kids, you know, Mitt Romney's a doer. I got to give it up to Mitt Romney. Romney's a doer. But I don't know if he can connect. I mean, it's like there's always this flaw. Now, it is true there's no perfect candidate. But it's a shame that we don't have somebody who's and, – and I've given these – I've actually written an editorial once where I put down all of the requirements of a good politician. One of them, Dr. Kurtzman, is you got to look like what you're running for. In other words, if you're running for a judge, it helps to look like a judge. If you're running for president, it helps to look like a president. Who looks most like a president, Romney or Santorum? Romney. It's not even close, yeah, is it? No, it's not. Romney comes off presidential and might be the biggest issue. He looks presidential. Right. He looks like he could, could be in a movie for the president. He right. Could, uh, George Clooney-like. Right. Oh, here's something, an original thought. I cannot believe not one national political commentator has said this. I mean, I watch them all. listen to them all. You know how, you know how Romney ought to be dealing with the money thing and, and not good enough? You know what he should be doing? Tell me. He should be talking about, hey, listen. I am CTO. I'm, I'm not going to doubt successful, doubt successful. He should say, listen, some of our most effective presidents 
have been financially successful. In fact, I just read something where George Washington is considered the richest president of all time, even far richer than I am. This is Romney talking. And George Washington was a pretty good president. Teddy Roosevelt was worth a lot of money, was a pretty good president. A lot of people on the Democratic side think FDR was a pretty good president. He was very wealthy. You see what I'm saying? Why don't they put his wealth and historical perspective to where people can relate to it and say, ah, I see the analogy. Now, nobody, doctor, all those people in Romney's camp, and they can't think of what the Bulldog's thinking. Is, is that not a great analogy? I think it's a great analogy. Compare yourself to George Washington. George Washington was the richest president of all time, and he did a pretty darn good job. Huge property owner. Yes, he, he did a great job. And take a look at JFK. He obviously had a ton of money, and he's well-respected. JFK? But he was also a doer. I mean, he was uh, in right? the armed forces. He did a lot of things, and that's the perfect combination. Right. Romney, Romney lacks that. He, he, he doesn't, doesn't like a guy that has his fingernails dirty at all, <laughs> ever. No, he doesn't. But it does look much more presidential. Take a look I, at, uh, could we have ever elected Ross Perot? Yeah. I take great pride. <laughs> I take, or Michael Dukakis. Yeah. I take great pride in coming up with original political commentary, and there's one for you right there. Be paying attention. When is somebody in the Romney's camp or a political pundit going to mention he ought to start comparing himself to George Washington, JFK, and others. And he can reach across the aisle for those independents. Say FDR, JFK, TR, George Washington. Mix it up. He's not that suave. He's not that, <laughs> he's not that smooth. He, he, he would have done it by now. Isn't that incredible, though? Yeah. yeah. Well, George well, Washington, our wealthiest president, did a pretty good job. <laughs> when we come back tomorrow, we'll have more radio superbity. Thanks for coming in, Dr. Kurtzman. My pleasure. Kurtzman Plastic Surgery in Kenwood. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. I hope tomorrow is yours on Real Talk 1160.